Hello. So I have this pipe that has some adhesive on there, although I don't feel much, but it should be there. Probably not gonna roll this on. Perfect. Yay. This plasma cutter is really in the way, I should clean it up. Now this time, I hope this works, it should be possible to pull on one piece and then all the tiny bits are gone. Not sure if that worked out, but we'll see. Um Oh, hmm, that's of no use. Normally I'll uh, weed out after it is at higher. Not sure if I want to try to do it differently. Probably I don't want to. Oh wait, yeah, I can still do this. No, I can. Okay, so I did it incorrect. Normally you weed out before you put it on something, and that's the way I designed this idea. <laughs> well, fuck it. And I'll just do it by hand. So it's a Carver uh, BNG R&D Strata kind of thing. And I just wanted to see if the foam... Well, I'll, I'll talk about that later. First, let's get it off. I really think an open space this large gives trouble. But I looked at the Carvers and the R&Ds uh, and uh, whatevers because they use much bigger magnets. The space is even bigger. I can't imagine that will not give trouble in the top end, but we'll see. I mean, uh, they might just be wrong and did it because it's the easiest method or gives the most SPL. I mean, not all choices are based on what is actually best. For the frequency response and distortion at least. Um, yeah, I'll go to the other table. I changed up the corrugator to having both shafts be stationary and why so it doesn't uh, so this spring not sure if that's visible will not like ride off when the shaft is turning and acting like some sort of knot because I had that the last time and suddenly uh, the spring is gone hmm. it's not aligned it's not aligned at all one spring is stronger and um, it's this one.
I'm gonna try that again because this is too crooked. Yeah, still is problematic. I need another another way of adjusting this because that was a lot of uh, annoying stuff. Can say that when according to plan. You know, when you want to test something so bad, like I do right now, that I'm just making a gazillion of mistakes, that's typically. That's how I roll, unfortunately. Uh, so I'm gonna decide, this is gonna be the connection side and that's the one we're gonna put on the tape and the other one we're gonna tension. Got no felt behind it. Just want to see what it does. Mm, I might go with less tape so I can get it off. It's not too long. Funny, you can see it screwed up there, but this wasn't exactly much work. I went to the shop and then this was ready, except for the corrugating. Corrugating. So now I'm, I need another piece, but um, I need to remove my cutting mat because I need another one of these, which will go over here. And then another one that is slightly wider, like this way, so I can attach uh, also the foamy bin. Because this thing relies on these corrugations being squished by a little bit of felt. So this is the method Carver kind of used, but they did is leave a uh, Capton or Mylar or whatever. Um, and up till here and then they did something rather nice I think so they cut a groove in here and had a metal rod laying in there same for here now when you put the other side on there you can by using a screw you can move this rod downwards and it will push the uh, leftover mylar or captain into this groove tensioning it sideways, which is a really good idea. I know Infinity used it as well, so they might copy it from each other. And I also know it doesn't always work that well. But uh, yeah, in my case, I don't have that right now. But it's uh, it's good to know that might be an option. I mean, it's a, it's a cool idea. 
because you can fiddle around with it later on. And uh, usually, in my case, it has to be uh, okay-ish in one go or start all over. So anyhow, I need to make another side to do the squishing. Not gonna make a push-pull, but I just need to squish the aluminium there. Because if I use it right now, well, it will work, but probably not real good. <clears throat> and why this is corrugating? Uh, corrugated, I don't think it has to do something with the resonance, although only in this direction it counts. It does something with the resonance. Because the R&D from B and G, the 50, 40, 75, etc., the very long ones, they do not seem to have any corrugation. They have only a few traces, four, and then mylar, they put a piece of tape on there. Hey, that reminds me of something. Um, and then use the same foam method. The problem with that is what they solve later on in the Neo 10. If I got the Neo 10 somewhere, I have a Neo 10. Right in front of me. I'll move this away because uh, I don't want to screw things up. So the Neo 10 doesn't look like this normally. <laughs> uh, but here you can see they have the coil and then they have this corrugation. Now what I had with my panel last time when I tested the rubber and, and the uh, fat magnet is that I said the part left and right of the coil is troublesome and will create a huge dip and peak because it's not moving along with the driven area. Now, I'll, I'm gonna show you. I did a small test to see if that was the case. And you would not be surprised, but it is. <laughs> so uh, I had tape on here and there. Now the problem is that tape is still very flexible. So it doesn't have, um, yeah, it does not support the mylar along its width. So it moves along with the coil, at least better than nothing on there. So uh, tape does not work for this kind of solution. This is like very thin foam, weighs nothing. It actually does form the same function as corrugation does here. And the only reason why people do this is if the panel was this wide, like this, you would have a, a Neo 8 and it doesn't go low enough because the resonance is not low enough. So what they did, making this wider drops resonance and then corrugated this to have it move a little bit along with this foil. Because if you would not do this, it will create a huge dip and peak somewhere. Very ugly looking. And I can show you because this is the measurement of the rubber magnet without this contraption you see a, a huge hump and some dips and this is with the foam pieces and it becomes especially in the lower end uh, nicer there's not a huge dip and the huge peak or hump is also gone and this measurement the last one is this panel but then uh, I use some uh, 30 and F because this coil somehow resonates here and there so I put some 30 and F glue over there it's rubbery so it damps a little bit better uh, downside is that you weigh down the whole thing and that's this last measurement where you can see that the top hand dropped off a little bit but it does look smoother so there is a yeah a balancing act how much do you damp it or how much do you weigh it down to damp it because you will lose on top end <clears throat> so all cool very nice well it does help if you uh, push on record I made the two halves didn't show that because it's really not that interesting now I'm gluing them together with some regular wood glue and some very silly clamps. 
it's not stru structural, structural, it only holds foam and pushes against the membrane, so it's not really critical. Oh wait, I can save time by doing two things. So I got this foamy stuffy. It's really soft polyethylene foam. So oh, so it should survive. At least I don't know if polyethylene degrades like polyurethane stuff or whatever that stuff is. I think it will. Might look that up. Because if I would make something not like this exactly, but that needs foam and you cannot reach it anymore after it is assembled, which is not ideal to begin with, but if so, then the foam should not degrade or like rot away, like in many speakers, like Apogee as well. If you cannot reach that foam to replace it, it might be completely fucked just because of piece of foam that is like one euro or less. And then you have to buy new membranes and fit them for like 2,000 euros. It's a bit like the quad disaster. Although, of course, I don't have the money to uh, test things uh, over 10 years. But by in quad design, it was funny, or it's not funny, it's not funny at all. They're expensive, they work great, and then the glue let go. Something as silly as super cheap as stuff and ruin your day. And of course I don't have the stuff or a lab to test all, all this, but if I can look it up, I will definitely try. That this remains long. Okay. So, and now I leave it alone. Look at this. Why does my bench look like this? <laughs> Why does it look like this here? Oh, uh, I, I'm gonna try some ESLs. Uh, grab everything and, you know, leave everything. Yeah, looks like... Uh, this reminds me of uh, when I was like young, playing with Playmobil and then it looks a bit like the same, like an explosion. Explosion of shit because I got no time to clean it up and put it away because you know, it takes way too much time. I need to go on. I need to finish this. That's what happened. What the, that's what's happening. Jesus Christ, I cannot talk today. Well, I'm gonna wait some more. So the carver can, can like tension it sideways still, I cannot, which would be helpful if I could, but yeah. So that's how you make things ugly. Just repeat it, it's just a test. Might not work. I don't know. I, I think this is gonna resonate like crazy, to be fair. Well, we'll see. 